strange things happen around the world every day, it looks like we are living in a strange world beyond our comprehension, this story happened in Japan, and it was never published on the media. In Japan, specifically in the exotic Shikoku Island, a group of children found an UFO and took it as their toy when they found it floating on a rice field during a summer afternoon when they were heading frolicking from school to his humble dwellings. A fascinating find that could cost them their lives, the first to notice was the intrepid young CEO who coincidentally had an extraordinary fondness for the alien world, so when a flash of silver light appeared on the horizon, between the sunset and mirage reflected in the rice field, he immediately set his attention on the object that had caused that glow and decided to leave behind that without telling his friends. After that first sighting the flying object was lost sight of, however, Sio was not satisfied with what he had seen and went into the waterlogged rice fields, with the firm intuition that he was about to discover something really fascinating as indeed it happened minutes later. Suddenly a strange round object with brightly colored lights around it appeared again, like the size of a football, moving so fast in a low flight that it almost collided with the boy's head, in fact so that this did not happen, he threw himself to the ground and was unconscious for a long time. When he came to himself it had already darkened and the UFO remained stationary in the air, it was about 120 cm high and about 20 meters away from where Sio was, so the reckless young man started walking towards him, crossing the rice field in which he was, and moved by his immense curiosity, he stretched his arms ready to capture the UFO, then something happened that could cost him his life. Unexpectedly and ruthlessly the UFO emitted a blinding flash directly into the eyes of the boy who made him lose his vision, so he tripped over the bushes and fell stunned into the rice-covered field and nearly drowned, his family, worried because he had not yet arrived from school, went out to look for him and they found him in that place with almost no vital signs, when they managed to revive him he had recovered his vision and the UFO was gone. A difficult story to believe, when Sio recovered from that event, he told his family and friends what his eyes had seen and obviously nobody believed him, his parents thought it was a fantasy excuse used by the boy, to justify his deter from the way home, only the group of friends closest to Sio, although they did not fully believe the story, at least gave him the benefit of the doubt and agreed to go the next Sunday to explore the rice field, with the intention of sighting the flying UFO. And if they ran with luck, take it home. Sio and his friends who were already beginning to convince themselves of the story, eagerly awaited the arrival of Sunday, at dawn they noticed that the day was rainy, although that was not an impediment for them, and in the same way they were all in Sio's house, and then they went together to the rice field. By mid-morning the rain was so strong that everyone was soaking wet, to top it all they had not succeeded in their mission, since the only flying thing they had seen on the horizon were the stones that Yuji, one of the friends of Sio, began to throw in all directions to rein his frustration. The boys returned home cold and disappointed saying that they would never trust Sio's word again, however, the boy did not give up and convinced his friends to return the following Sunday. In the following Sunday everything went well from the beginning, the morning looked sunny and the young people had the spirit and the renewed hopes. The boy's vigilance paid off when on their way to the rice paddy they spied the object lying on the ground in the middle of the field before them. The teenagers, now armed with a camera, sagely decided to snap a photo before they approached the downed craft. Once the flashbulb went off the object on the ground began spinning and rapidly rose into the air. The unknown cameraman shot another photo just after its ascension. The still spinning object almost seemed to be burrowing into the dirt when it stopped moving. At this point 14-year-old Hiroshi Mori cautiously moved toward the incapacitated flying saucer. The brave, or foolhardy, boy decided to bend over and lift the object up with his bare hands. As he did so he claimed that he felt something moving inside. A photo of Miro holding the UFO was then taken. As he did so he claimed that he felt something moving inside. A photo of Miro holding the UFO was then taken. The boys marveled at their peculiar prize before Miro wrapped it in a plastic bag and placed it in his backpack and took it home. Once there the boys warily measured the object and declared it to be nearly 8 inches wide and almost 4 inches in height. 
the now inert UFO was said to weigh about 3 pounds. They also discovered a series of concentric curves, 31 small holes and 3 unique designs etched into the base of the object. The gang deemed that the etchings represented waves or clouds, a bird, or some sort of flying object, and something they interpreted to be a budding flower. There was no visible propulsion system. Following their inspection, the boys repacked the object in plastic and brought their puzzling find to the home of Yasuo Fujimoto. Fujimoto's father, Matsuo, was the current director of the Center for Science Education in the city of Chi. The senior Fujimoto gave the object a cursory examination, assuming that the find was of little significance. That would be a decision that he would come to regret. In his own words, it is unprecedented how this type of important information does not receive the media coverage that should, but we know very well the reasons for this information bias, which are related to the perverse interests of the world power dome. Perhaps we're dealing with a non-terrestrial surveillance device here. Some unknown technology sent from another world or time or dimension or even the ocean's depths to observe the human race. Who's to say that the unusual markings on the base of the UFO are not intended to be a message for humanity much like the one we etched into the gold-plated disc on Voyager 1 for other citizens of the galaxy to discover?